Hey, 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 what's up, guys? Welcome back to your favorite show here on the internet. Welcome back to Dead Malls, and welcome all to Chicagoland. Today, as we round out the evening hours of day four, we make a short stop at Kankakee's Northfield Square Mall. Actually, to be honest, I don't really know what town this mall is in. Google says Bradley, but also Burbanis, and then when I look at it from above, it's really just part of the larger Kankakee area, so, uh... I'm just gonna say Kankaki, if I'm wrong don't hate me. This mall contests, in my humble opinion, as one of the most 90s malls I've ever visited. Tile planters, neon, glass and mirror, and a godly amount of white really throw this mall up there. Before we get started I'd like to congratulate our winner who was able to successfully guess the next mall. Very nice job, Noah Voris. If you'd like to have your chance of being the next shoutout, stick around for the next challenge. Anyways, let's head in through that ultimate 90s entrance, tell its story, and see what the square has to offer us. I would like to preface this video by saying I did visit this mall just a few hours before closing, but wow, it felt so empty. I mean, coming off the orchards, I was kind of grossed out by malls, but this place brought my standards right back up, and good lord, it was so clean and pristine in here, but it was so empty. I saw maybe five people, and it was pretty much like right at the entrance. Just absolutely bizarre. Also, before we get started with the history here, I just could not get enough of this old JCPenney entrance. In my years of mall travels, I've seen many JCPenney entrances, from drywall to wood, and of course the mirrored glass look, but I've never seen a tealish green mirrored look. So cool. Northfield Square's story begins in Kankakee in the late 80s, as the Tri-City area wanted to construct a brand new mall to reel in business and tourism. After all, commercial and suburban sprawl was shooting north, and as conveniently placed on I-57 as the cities were, the decently sized metro seemed fit for a mall. The Edward J. DeBartolo company would soon begin construction, with an opening date scheduled for later in 1990. At the same time, DeBartolo would begin working on Northfield's nearly identical sister, 250 miles away, Illinois Star Center. Usually I would say that the public was quite excited for this mall, however, not given much media attention and tucked away on an industrial side of the city, Northfield Square was relatively not the public eye, a factor that would be detrimental to the mall's early years. I love this like wall right here, it advertises just how many choices this mall has, but then again there's just a bunch of empty posters where they've taken old places down, and I bet half the ones you see aren't even open anymore. 
This whole wing, once belonging to Carson Pierce Scott's second store, is pretty much all walled off, and it really makes me wonder, what was once down here? Please, if anyone knows, I would love to find out. On August 1st, 1990, Northfield Square Mall would open to the public as a massive shopping destination. With four anchors, a food court, and plenty of stores, the mall should have been a smash hit off the bat. Sears, JCPenney, Carson Pierce Scott and Venture, along with space for a fifth anchor, would be the stakes, and underneath the tent lie over 500,000 square feet of leasable retail space. The only problem? Well, as aforementioned, the public didn't really know about the mall. It had virtually zero marketing, and in that case, it didn't attract near as many tenants or shoppers. Only around 60% of mall spaces would be filled at opening. Despite this, the beautiful blue and white neons would elegantly light the corridors, filled with fountains and palm trees, and over the years, life would come to the mall. Just after opening in 1991, the mall's twin, Illinois Star Center, would open in Marion, Illinois. Over the years, life would come in full stride to the mall. Out parcels would quickly be filled, and new stores would join the internal lineup. In 1997, the fifth anchor spot would be filled by a mall theater called Movies 10. A year later, the first changes would begin, with the closing of Venture in the summer of 98 as the St. Louis-based company went bankrupt and went out of business. This East Anchor, being the most obscured from the mall, would be taken over by Carson Pierce Scott as they separated their now two anchors, with the original becoming a woman's store and the old venture becoming Carson Pierce Scott Store for Men, Children, and Home, luckily keeping all of Northfield's anchors filled. As the 2000s began, the mall would soldier into the new millennia, now in the hands of Simon Properties, who would work tirelessly to bring the mall up to 90% occupancy. And the late 2000s, just before the recession, would be the peak of Northfield Square. When I was walking through Northfield Square, you know, just appreciating the level of architectural detail, I noticed something about the mall, and really any mall from the 90s. 
is you get that tinge of modernism. Like, people wouldn't call this mall outdated in my opinion, although it's, it's definitely on that cusp. It still retains the retro nature where you can look at the old tenants and know what they were. Because, you know, most mall stores, they all have that same look in between all the malls. And to me, it's just sad because you have all of these old national retailers like Rave, Mastercut, Suncoast, and Express, and they've all long been gone. And in their place are just these little mom and pop shops that even those have closed down. One of my greatest joys about seeing these 90s malls is I get to put myself through this culture that I never got to experience for myself. Some people ask me, they're like, really, malls? And yes, malls, they are that interesting. It's not just this big, empty building, it's a fading culture. Throughout the Great Recession, the mall remained a strong presence, sitting at about 85% occupancy. However, as the 2010s began, there were flaws, and they were becoming prevalent. The stronger 90s tenants and clientele were leaving. Stores like Rave, Deb, Wet Seal, and such were going out of business, leaving punctures on the directory. A prevalent and popular mall tenant at the time, Ruby Tuesdays, would close in fall of 2012. In 2016, tenants were closing at an alarming rate. Big box, online shopping, and the simple reality of old stores going out of business emptied them all out. And that year, Namdar would acquire it for $9.6 million. Yeah, I know, the future was bleak, and as the year 2018 began, it would get scary. Before we hit up the food court to check out the wide array of quote-unquote choices, let's hit up the weather. After all, I'd want to make sure we have a beautiful evening to film in. Be right back. And here we have Northfield Square's food court. Once the mall's oasis with palm trees, neon, fountains, and dozens of dining options, today it's a cold, empty, silent wasteland of empty chairs and empty shops. Also, here at the end, that sort of glazed glass block entrance, I just gotta ask, was that an arcade? Possibly, uh, let's say, timeout? Let me know down below. Thank you. 
I wonder what this sort of... I guess you could say it looks like a walkway, or no, a runway, you know, the, the ones models use. I wonder if that's what this was, or if it was ever used for that purpose. This whole food court, it just radiates a badass neon vibe, and all the dark corners I just imagine the Grim Reaper slowly stalking, waiting for a victim, a kill under the red neon light. Ooh, spooky. This mall should have been a Halloween episode. Wait, wait. No, this just came to me. Can you imagine that? A scary movie where, uh, I don't know, let's say someone is locked in the mall with a killer or a demon, and every time they strike, all the lights and neons go red, and it's like this pitch blackness in the mall otherwise. Oh my god, someone hire me. I got ideas. <laughs> Okay, but like, for real though, it's gotta be creepy as hell in here at night. All of those walled off spaces... Imagine for a sec, let's just say all of the entrances were walled off. Or, it was like every turn you made was just more empty mall. Like an infinite empty backrooms mall, essentially. Someone, someone please write a book about this, I feel like it's at least deserving of a crappy Goosebumps adaptation. <laughs> On January 4th of 2018, Sears announced it would be leaving Northfield Square as a plan to close 108 stores nationwide, and would see its glass doors locked up by that April. Just days after Sears closed for good, it would be announced Carson Pierce Scott would be closing in the mall. That meant both of their huge anchor stores on either side would go dark, and would do so by August, leaving JCPenney as the last man standing. Also, just before this horrible year of 2018 could wrap up, Northfield's sister, Illinois Star Center, would close for good after years of struggling. Throughout 2019 and into 2020, almost every store would leave, with large portions of the old Venture slash Carson Pierce Scott Men for Home and Children's Wing being completely walled off, giving it a very sad and aged white drywall look. Also around this time, the final remaining neons would die. The beautiful blue neons over the years would be left off, sadly. Finally, in October of 2020, JCPenney would close, leaving them all completely anchorless, and leaving the Cinemark Theater as the last major tenant. As of when I recorded this video in May of 2022, the mall sits at about 10% occupancy. The food court itself is 100% empty, and the palm trees have been stripped, and some of these fountains don't even work, or have been stripped themselves. Northfield Square is a depressing far cry from what it once was, the neon 90s mall for the people. When I saw this, I literally just kept saying to myself, there's no way, there's no way that this little balloon is dying right in front of me. I feel like this little balloon just, it perfectly encapsulates this small one, that's, that's why I had to record it. Just this sinking, deflating thing, slowly falling to the floor until, oop, it's dead. I love this so much. <laughs>
as of November of 2022, Northfield Square sits just about how I left it in May. Redevelopment has been on the table since 2021, and the village of Bradley really just wants to see the entire mall demolished, save the dankers, and replaced with parks, housing, and outdoor retail. But so far, nothing has been done, and all these just remain as hopes and dreams. Namdar, the current owners, having a care in the world for this beautiful mall and saving it. And for now, it'll just sit as is, slowly dying and being forgotten. I guess you could really say it came full circle for Northfield Square. Thank you all for joining me today as we got to tour this amazing mall. If you guys enjoy my dem mall content, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future dem malls episodes. And make sure to have the Patreon support me and I'll send you a monthly dem mall Polaroid taken and signed by me. Next week, as we begin the final day of Day 5, we head up north to a small suburb to check out a mall that was hinted at somewhere in this video. It's a tough one, so good luck. Guess which mall I'll be at and I'll shout you out in the next episode. Anyways, until then, have yourselves a very lovely evening, and peace out guys, see you later.